This video is aimed at simplifying and demystifying anterior vitrectomy. As cataract surgeons, we tread along a 2 to 4 micron thin posterior capsule. Breaking this can lead to complications. The reasons for PCR are endless as enumerated here. This shows how small the margin of error is during our surgical manipulations. It is best to contain the PCR with minimal vitreous loss and avoid retained lens fragments. This video will demonstrate management of PCR post nucleus removal and highlight how to do anterior vitrectomy, remove cortex and implant an IOL successfully both in FACO and SICS. Before doing anterior vitrectomy, it is vital to understand the vitreous base anatomy. Retina is thin peripherally and has strong attachments at the vitreous base. Intraoperative manipulations will increase the risk of retinal tear at this area. This video clip will demonstrate management of pre-existing PCR from an inadvertent lens touch during intravitreal injection. Note the linear PC tear with vitreous prolapsing into the phaco probe. Now stop. Be in foot position 1 that is irrigation. Remove the second instrument. Inject dispersive OVD while coming back to foot position 0. It is crucial to follow this sequence as this will prevent further vitreous prolapse. We followed this and prevented enlargement of PCR in this case and did posterior capsular excess to contain the PCR. We can even get away without doing anterior vitrectomy and place the IOL in bag successfully. Once instruments are out, it is better to suture the main port, both in FACO and SICS and then proceed with anterior vitrectomy. This will help to maintain the anterior chamber better. Before proceeding with anterior vitrectomy, it is useful to understand the two modes of vitrectomy, that is IA cut and cut IA. In both modes, foot position 1 is irrigation. In IA cut, foot position 2 is aspiration followed by cut in foot position 3. In cut IA, foot position 2 is cut followed by aspiration in foot position 3. IA cut is used to remove cortex while cut IA mode is used for anterior vitrectomy. Why is this important? We have to always cut the vitreous first and only then aspirate. Doing the other way around can lead to tractions. Anterior vitrectomy should always be biaxial. Irrigation can be with a 24 or 23 gauge cannula directed towards the angle away from the PCR. This will avoid hydration of the vitreous and avoid further vitreous prolapse. The cutter should enter the anterior chamber first followed by the irrigation cannula. It is useful to go through the PCR and complete the vitrectomy. Cut rate has to be the maximum that the machine can offer. The bottle height or the IOP should be lowered. AFR also has to be kept low. These numbers are not fixed. It should be adjusted dynamically based on the stability of the anterior chamber. Once vitrectomy is done, it is crucial to search for hidden cortex remnants and remove them. One can use iris hooks or kuglin hook to enhance visibility. IA cut mode is very useful to remove cortex. If an occasional vitreous tag is noted, one can switch back to anterior vitrectomy and then proceed with cortex removal. Dry aspiration with a Simco cannula can also be done. Leaving behind large chunks of cortex can lead to significant intraocular pressure spikes postoperatively. We now prepare for intraocular lens placement. A dispersive ovary can be used to plug the rent and form the sulcus. Enlarging the incision slightly will enable easy insertion of a 3-piece intraocular lens through a B cartridge. 3-piece intraocular lens, because of its design, is best suited in eyes with compromised PC both in FACO and SICS. Placing haptics in sulcus and capturing the optic under the rexus margin ensures the best stability of IOL.
Sometimes with broken ALC or large lenses, successful optic capture will not be possible. One can still place intraocular lens in sulcus but can have a small risk of eye wire decentration later. One has to avoid placing single piece foldable intraocular lens in sulcus at all costs. These lenses are not designed for sulcus placement and will eventually lead to complications. We then suture the main port both in SICS and FACO. This is crucial to have a stable anterior chamber to avoid hypotony and infections. One can then proceed to wash visco. So this can be done with an IA cut mode or a separate visco removal mode. Retained visco will cause post-operative intraocular pressure spikes but one should not be too aggressive with this. Passive removal with BSS in a syringe will also help. Diluted Ryamsel node staining is a simple technique to identify vitreous. Even if one does not use before initiating anti vitrectomy, it is a good practice to use it at least before final closure to not miss any vitreous tags. If vitreous tags are detected, one has to reinitiate anti vitrectomy and clear them. So, this will avoid post operative complications. Finally, hydrate all wounds, make sure all the ports are watertight. We don't want hypotony in an eye with compromised PC. We recommend using intracameral moxifloxacin in all eyes with compromised PC to reduce the risk of endophthalmitis. Anterior vitrectomy does not stop at the operating theatre. The aftercare is of paramount importance to recognize and treat complications. To conclude, remember to handle vitreous carefully. Watch for the anterior chamber stability throughout the surgery to contain the complication. We hope we have highlighted the basic principles and simplified the anterior vitrectomy procedure.